Stop! 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 How about that got you off, kid? Seeing people in pain. If you ever bully or hurt anybody again, I'll come back and butt fuck your father with your mom's headless corpse on this goddamn lawn. Twelve years old, my ass. Fuck. You. So this is Louie, and I'm going to be talking about The Batman. Um, I'm going to try to go easy on the spoilers, uh, even though there isn't really much to spoil, honestly. From the beginning, is this a bad film? No, it's not. It's not a bad film. Is it a great film? No, it is not a great film. It does certain things well, and it, it tries certain things that I think are worthy of giving it credit. It's it's honestly the the better Batman film I've seen in quite a while. Um, the things that I really hated about the, the Christian Bale series, like the trilogy, um, it, it, it avoids certain mistakes that that film series made. That if you take The Dark Knight as a standalone, you can say, oh, this is a fantastic series. But it's like, no, if you add the first and the third movie to it, it weighs it down tremendously, in my opinion. Um, and with this standalone film, The Batman, it avoids mistakes that that film series made. And it is, without a doubt, better than any of the bullshit made with Ben Affleck. It is easily better than anything that related to him in the Justice League films and all that shit. Uh, but could have could this film have been significantly better than what it was yes and there are many many ways in which it could have been better the the biggest one for me was that this is the edgiest pg movie i have ever seen it goes well out of its way to in it like it includes certain edgy things but it's like well we're just going to give you a taste but we're not going to show shit and we're not going to get into any shit because then we're going to lose our pg 13 rating um this film was very, very PG, despite all the edgy aspects to it. And the problem with doing half measures is that if you're going to be edgy, you're going to be dark, go all the way. Never do half measures. And that's an aspect to the film that I found very disappointing, was that if they would have just made it R, and they would have just... Like, you don't need to say fuck every other word, okay? This isn't Goodfellas, this isn't Casino, I get it. But then again, there are things that you could have benefited from that would have made certain details better, that would have made certain scenes work better, that would have made better characters, and that would have made an overall better film. So, this was an edgy PG film that should have been a rated R film. Um, I understand that there's risk in that, but look at how Joker did, okay, with Joaquin Phoenix. Look at how that film did. You know, you want to be something to, like, counter the Marvel Universe. That's fine. I get it. I think that you're you're making the better choice over the quippy bullshit like everyone wants to be Robert Downey Jr. No one has the comedic chops. It's cringe shit. I'd rather you do what you're doing here than what they're doing. Obviously, the Marvel Universe has their fans, but I hate the quippy shit. I hate it. And this film is like, nah, we're not going to be including any quippy bullshit. We're not going to have a lot of dialogue. And this film didn't. And again, signs of a good editor, signs of a good fucking writer. Could it obviously have been better? Yes. Um, and so what's funny is that honestly... Uh, let me get up the name, uh, Robert Patterson as Batman, fine, fine, like, despite all the, uh, you know, initial issues that people had, he was fine, I, I can't really say anything bad about the actor or the presentation or anything, like, he wasn't the sort of, like, cringe lord that people thought he was going to be, maybe they, re you know, they reshot things or whatever but there's not a lot of dialogue there's not a lot of chances for him to be cringe um 
so it, it works to this film's immense benefit that they had very minimal dialogue that it was mainly focused around what was happening and that when someone needed to speak, you know, it was something that needed to be said or it talks about the, what's going to, you know, what's happening or whatever. You know, there are definite positive aspects to this film that shows you that talent was behind it. And unfortunately, there's a dichotomy. There's actors who are inoffensive, who are fine, and then there were good actors that were well cast. And then there were terrible fucking choices that were made in this film. The easiest example that I could give for a good casting choice, where I, I didn't even know until I looked it up, was Colin Farrell as the Penguin. I had no idea that was Colin Farrell until I looked it up after the, I saw the film. And I was like, yeah, no wonder. No wonder. I, he was my favorite fucking character of the film. He was great. He felt like a legit mobster in the film. So what they did with the Penguin in this film, thumbs up. Not two thumbs up. You got one thumbs up, okay? And that's saying something from somebody who's very critical of a lot of superhero, superhero films and all this shit, okay? Um, by no means do I think that The Dark Knight, which is basically all the, the, the big one for DC... I think that that film, and especially that series, did a lot of shit wrong. Um, it's just that they had a phenomenal actor as the Joker. And a phenomenal performance. Um, and in this film, Colin Farrell did good. You have people like Robert Patterson who were totally inoffensive, in my opinion. You had Zoe Kravitz for uh, Selena Kyle as the Catwoman. Just, again, inoffensive, just throw away, I think it was Michelle Pfeiffer from Batman Returns, if memory serves, who I liked a lot and I thought did very well as Catwoman. It's not the same. There's no chemistry. It just didn't work. Like, But the thing was, is that was she the, the absolute throwaway no-name non-entity from the, the Dark Knight Returns or whatever the fuck it is for the, the that Christian Bale trilogy? Was it that bad of a performance? No, but was it really anything noticeable, anything special? Was there any chemistry between her and Batman or, you know, Zoe and Robert Patterson? No, there was nothing. It, it just didn't work. It was nothing, but I honestly expected that because it's kind of hard to make that work. You have a lot of other actors in this film who just kind of phoned it in. Jeffrey Wright just phoned it in as Gordon, non-entity, inoffensive, just phoned it in. Uh... Paul Dano, I believe it said, as the Riddler, which isn't a spoiler. Um, he was from There Will Be Blood. I liked him in There Will Be Blood. He absolutely phoned it in in this fucking film. It's like, okay, I'm the Riddler, and I'm an incel, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, I don't care. Make me care. You didn't. Um, phoned it in. Wag of the finger at him. Just phoned in this role. Uh, however... The real offensive aspect to this film, and the friend that I saw it with, him and I were in total agreement, was John Turturro, I believe it's pronounced, who I think was in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Uh, and other movies like that, like, awful. Like, I have not seen a total miscast since What's-His-Face from Old School in the second season of True Detective. Like, horrific casting choice. Uh, he is my number one for, like, what the fuck were you thinking? Abysmal. And I, I just thought to myself, like, my friend and I were discussing after we saw the film, we left the theaters, we're like, we're both in agreement, like, what were they thinking? Like, that was terrible. Why, like, the guy was supposed to be this imposing strangler, and it's like, this guy is not physically imposing or imposing in any way at all. Why would you cast this guy for, oh, man, he's the big, bad Carmaine Falcone? Like, he's a total non-entity in this fucking film. He's not imposing in the slight... In, you know what's amazing? You, you, you have this guy up against Colin Farrell, who's actually trying, and it's like, I liked Colin Farrell as the Penguin. He stood out. He was my favorite character of the whole fucking film, up against 
John Turturro as Carmine Falcone, and it's like, oh my god! Like when they were when they were watching like the actual like the the, the hard edit or like the first draft of this film, didn't they realize like, oh shit, we made a big mistake. That was a terrible casting choice. Um, you know, everyone's ranting and raving about Robert Patterson. No, dude. The black eye of this fucking film is this horrific presentation of this major character. Horrific. Terrible. Could not be a bigger joke in this film. Where I, I feel nothing. He's not scary. He's not anything. Not anything. There's nothing about him that, that speaks to me in any way that makes me care in the slightest other than why did you choose this actor to play this important role? You got Colin Farrell to do the Penguin. Boom, it worked in my opinion. It worked. Boom, it landed. The Penguin in, like, I think it was a Maserati and all that sort of thing. It works. It works. Honest to God, in my view, I thought it was at least a one thumb up. You know, I want to see more. And that's what you, you should want from somebody who came into this film very skeptical. As soon as my friend told me this movie was three hours long, I nearly shit myself. I was like, oh, God. Three hours long? Oh, God. But, in my opinion, it, this film was well-edited enough and well-paced enough that it didn't feel that long. And we were talking about a film where, you know, there's a scene, uh, and it's in the hospital, and I, I, I'll, I won't say who uh, the other person was, but it was, at a minimum, Bruce Wayne. So Bruce Wayne is in the hospital talking to someone, my friend and I are watching this scene, and a dude is legit snoring in the audience. You know, up uh, up until he had a um, apnea moment where he chokes or whatever, and he goes what, and he just wakes the fuck up. And my friend and I start laughing. Like this film is long; it is paced pretty well. It's edited okay, but a guy in the audience literally fell asleep during the film. <laughs> And it was a funny moment. It was honestly a funny moment in the theater where there's a guy snoring in the audience. <laughs> so you lost that guy, Batman. Uh, what's the name? M Matt Reeves. You lost that guy, but you didn't lose me. Okay, I'm not going to condemn this film, but, you know, I just got to say, it, it just... There's a lot weighing it down. You, it could have been so much better. It, it really like when I, when you look at the end of the film, and I'm gonna show you a visual hint to the ending. Visual hint to the ending. I was like, oh come on, you're not gonna do it. You don't have the balls. This is not an R-rated film. You've been PG the entire fucking time. You're not gonna fucking do it. Give me a fucking break. And of course they don't do it. It's another sleight of hand. It's another, ooh, edgy, 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 but we're not going to pull the trigger. We're not going to actually follow through because we're just going to do another half measure. And I just sat back in the seat in the theater and I rolled my fucking eyes. I'm like, yeah, you're predictable. You're not going to fucking do it. You could have fucking done it and wowed me. You could have fucking wowed me, but you didn't do it. You did a half measure when you should have gone all the way. And I, that disappointed me. There were several moments in this film. There's a scene at the end where there's a Joker tease. There's the Joker tease. Who, it is, who is it? Is it someone that would have blown my mind and I would have come home and I would have been slamming my desks, you know, defending this film? If you would have made it Joaquin Phoenix, I would have shit myself in the theater. I would have been cheering my lungs out in the theater. I would have been blown away. I would have been floored. I would be singing this film's praises. I would be saying, oh my God, this is going to be awesome. I hope there's a sequel. But it's some throwaway fucking actor. And I was like, motherfuck. God damn you. Why couldn't you just do that? Because it would have been an amazing amazing fucking way to end the film an amazing fucking thing that you're linking these two the continuity between these two films it would have been fucking amazing but no you had a choice and of course it's just some throwaway fucking faggot and i was just sitting there like fuck like that could have been awesome dude i was sitting in my seat like oh holy shit no way 
Again, once again, it's like several moments in the film. I'm like, oh shit, are they going to do it? Are they going to do it? Of oh, fucking course they're not going to fucking do it. God damn you. Matt Reeves, you fuck. Several moments in the film where I'm actually sitting up in my seat. I'm like, oh shit, where's this going? And it's pfft, jerk off nowhere. Nothing. Fuck you. So disappointing in that regard. This could have been a great film. But they made bad choices. They made bad choices, and now it's just kind of not great, not terrible. You know, they even had an actor from uh, from Chernobyl. They did. They had the the one uh, bureaucrat guy uh, who was uh, some top end cop, which uh, I was fine with. He, I liked him. I recognized him immediately from his voice. He's got a real throaty, scratchy voice. So I'm like, oh hey, cool. But did they go all the way? Nope. Nope. They had several chances and they fucked up. Oh, why, why, why? God damn. That's all I, all I can say is this film could have been so much better. It, it, it could have legit blown me away. Um, but they did not fucking do it. They refused to fucking actually pull the trigger and go all the way. Um... There's several moments in this film that were just so disappointing to me. And I went into this with very low expectations. And uh, throughout the film, I kept getting built up and built up and built up. I'm like, oh, come on, come on, come on, give me something. And nope, just another disappointment. I was like, oh, come on, come on. Why you got to do this to me? So, yeah, um, I went in with low expectations. And it's not a bad movie, but it disappointed me deeply. Um, there is a hint in the movie at one point when it came to, uh, uh, Selena Kyle's paternity. Um, like they say who her father is and it's a spoiler and it leads nowhere. It's just nothing. It's a, t it's another jerk off. It's another disappointment, but I thought it was going to be a fucking swerve. I thought, you know, it's, it's not going to be Selena Kyle. It's going to be another name that starts with S and ends with F. And I'm like, oh shit, like, yo, uh, is Selena actually going to be Sophia? I won't say what the last name is, but if you know anything about Batman, um, it's kind of deep in the lore. Uh, like I said, the last name starts with an F. You should be able to guess who that is. Uh, I thought that's who she was going to be. And I was going to be like, yo, what's going to happen here? But nothing. It's just Selena Kyle. And I was like, God damn it. No, come on. I thought this was, I thought this was going to get fucking interesting right here. But no, it's another fucking disappointment. It's just, oh, she's a fucking a bastard. Okay, God damn you. Like, I thought I was going to get swerved. I thought it was going to be cool. But nope, it's just another non-entity. It goes nowhere. It, it means nothing. Oh, why film? Why? Why must he do this to me? disappointing is all I can say as it relates to that. Um, uh, is there anything really to say about the film itself, like the plot and that? Um, not really. The plot is just kind of um, not terrible, not really that important either, because I've never really liked the Riddler. Uh, the performance here was phoned in. They go for an incel Riddler, and it's like, well, honestly, you know, I was debating my friend after the movie. Like, I don't really care how the Riddler is played. I don't care whether it's Paul Dano or it's fucking Jim Carrey. The Riddler always sucks, in my opinion. I've not seen one performance of the Riddler that was not just another throwaway performance. Like, I don't give a fuck about the Riddler. I have watched Batman, and I've, I don't really want to say if be a, I'm not really a fan of Batman all that much. There are aspects of like the DC universe that I liked, I grew up with, you know, I still have some attachment to, but like, you know, outside of Joker with Joaquin Phoenix being a phenomenal movie with a phenomenal actor and all that sort of deal, um. There's that, and I really like that, and it happens to be Batman, so hey, maybe that's like a cherry on the top. Is it really the whole deal? No, it's just a cherry. But it, it, it's like, I hate seeing something fall in line with something that could just be another movie by any other name, where it doesn't really do anything 
that I find all that interesting. It's not bad. I'm not saying that. But there's nothing, like, there's there's games and there's movies and there's books and there's stories, you know, fiction that I like that is flawed, that is deeply flawed, but I really fucking like because it does certain things that are very provocative, very interesting, that no one else has done, or it does it in a way that it's, you know, it subverts your expectations, but in a good way, um, or, it, or it's willing to push an envelope and cross a line or do something that is just so unexpected. You know, it surprises me as a viewer, or however you want to put it. It's provocative, it's interesting. And this film had several opportunities to do that, and even baits you a little bit with it. But they never actually, there's no payoff. There is no payoff to any of it. And it just disappoints you. And it's like, oh, come on, you guys could have made this better. You know, um... Yeah, I mean, that, that really is the thing. It, it's just decent enough writing, decent enough direction, decent enough pacing, and there are definite flaws with the movie. The edginess without the grit, the real grit, and there's positives. The realism aspect, not getting too over the top with Bruce Wayne as Batman and that sort of thing, or being or, or Batman being Batman. Like They never really get too crazy with it, although like the him being insanely bru bulletproof one second and then the next second he's getting leveled by a shotgun blast that's kind of dumb because a second ago he's taking fucking SE smg fire from like a millimeter away to he's getting almost killed by shotguns it's like okay that doesn't really make a lot of sense but whatever um but it never really got so crazy that it was offensive um, and it had an aspect of realism to it that I'm fine with, that I'm a lot more comfortable than the goofiness and the weirdness and the stupidity of the Marvel Universe, which I can't stand. Decently directed, um, and I'll say decently because there's the car chase scene in the film that it's so fucking dark and so crazy in terms of the fucking edits. Like, the edits in that scene are terrible, where it's like, oh, fuck, uh... We don't actually want to do an actual physical car chase scene like it was in the previous Batman films where you're actually watching cars racing around and crashing and all that sort of thing. So we're just going to make it really dark and it's raining and there's close-ups and, you know, here's a camera on the edge of the car filming the road, but everything else is fucking CG. That sucked. Um, kiss my ass, Matt Reeves. You should have just really actually done that scene the way that it was supposed to be done, which is make a legit fucking car chase scene. You know, you don't have to be insanely realistic, but you gotta make it an actual fucking car chase scene where I can follow what the fuck is happening and it's not super fucking dark to where we're on the highway and we're going the wrong way, but it's so goddamn dark, the only way I can figure that out is by seeing the headlights, and that's it. You know, it's not really scary if I can't tell what the fuck is happening. And they probably hired the same CG guy that they had in the second fucking Matrix movie where it looks super unrealistic. So we're like, okay, uh, just make it really fucking dark and rainy so we can't see shit. Put the camera literally inside the fucking wheel well so we can't tell what the fuck is happening because everything is fucking CGI. Uh, <laughs> what can I say? Um, it's just kind of, like I said, disappointing from someone who just left the theater that... I just felt kind of baited, and I felt like watching the film, like, is this actually going to go from being kind of mediocre to being cool? But unfortunately, the cool parts of the film, they never deliver on. It's just teased, you know? You know, they, they try to be super edgy, and uh, my buddy said it reminded him of the Saw films with the Riddler in certain scenes, but they never show any of it. They just imply they just imply the shit. Um, and I and remember it's like the same kind of rat shit that was in Game of Thrones. Except for they actually... I don't even remember if they showed it directly. If they not just implied it with... We're holding a torch to the bucket with the rat in it. You know, oh, oh, I'm screaming. Oh, you know. Like, they couldn't even go that far because it's like, okay, then we're gonna... It's a legit torture scene and now it's R-rated. So we're just gonna literally imply... The very minimum of if it's attached to his body and then we're going to be grossed out by it in the morgue and not show anything. Not even show like a hair on the head of the body. Nothing. Like that sucks. Come on, guys. 
This is it feels like I'm watching uh, like a fucking animated Disney movie here. You're doing all this insanely edgy shit, including pointing directly to the worst mass shooting in American history, but never actually following through on fucking any of it at all. So yeah, I just got to thumb down, thumb down for all that baiting shit. Okay, fuck off with all that shit, Matt Reeves. Suck my goddamn dick with it. That sucks. Stop Stop blue-balling me with that shit if you're going to go there. If you're going to be if it's going to be dark and edgy, do not continuously blue-ball me throughout a 3-hour fucking film to edgy shit. Fuck off. Um so yeah, um I could go on at length basically speaking to that effect, but I think the review is already kind of long as it is. I guess I could recommend it only for like a one-off viewing. Just because I'd like to hear, like, what do you think about it? Because my friend actually had a lot of interesting things to say about it once we left the theater. He had actually had a lot of good points. Um, it was interesting to hear other people's opinions on the film. Because I find this to be a very mixed film. Um, there are aspects to it that I like. Uh, there's aspects to it that I like better than, like, the Christian Bale trilogy. I don't remember the name of the director for that trilogy. There's aspects of this film that I like th better than of that series. So that's definitely, in my opinion, a thumbs up in its column. But then again, I don't remember being continuously blue balled in that series as I was in this film. Um, so I guess I will put it to you, the audience. What do you think of this f movie? What do you think? And if you find it on discount or if it's on YouTube with like it's free with ads or whatever, Watch it. Give it a watch. It's not terribly paced. It's not, you know, it doesn't feel terribly long because I think there's decent enough editing in it that they can keep things moving well enough that the three hours space out decently enough to where there's only kind of a few slow, slow scenes where you can feel it drag a little bit, where the anchor comes down, so to say. There's a couple scenes like that in the film, but it's not a lot. For a three-hour film, it's not a lot, so that's a thumb up. It's one thumb up and it's column. It's not easy to do that. If you've listened to me talk about shit in the past, that's one of my biggest complaints is bad pacing, bad editing. And in this film, I'll give it a thumb up. You made a, th a three-hour film not feel like a three-hour film. That takes talent. That legit takes talent when it comes to fiction. And I got to give this film credit for that. Because um, there's been plenty of films that I've seen, not in, even in recent memory, where it's like two hours long, two and a half, three hours, where you fucking feel it. It fucking drags. Uh, the editor of the film was William Hoy and Tyler Nelson. So I will give these two guys credit. I'm not really sure who deserves it more, but I, I will give them both credit that um, there was good editing in this film. I'll say good. Um, they deserve credit for that because I don't think it's easy to do that with this long of a film. However, I will say to Greg Frazier, who was a cinematographer, fuck you, cocksucker. Just fuck you. I, like, a car chase scene should not be all wide shots, which it really was. A, there was a lot of that in the, the Christian Bale trilogy, which has its own issues. But when the fucking camera is in the fucking wheel well of the car and I can't tell what the fuck is going on, fuck off. So I will say that about the cinematography of the film. Thumbs down. But the editing, I'll give a thumbs up. Uh, but I, I'll leave it to you. I want to hear some opinions in the, in the chat, in the, you know, in the comments, rather. I want to hear some commentary in the comment section about what you thought about this film because I have a very mixed opinion on this. Um... There's definitely good aspects to the film, but there's definitely bad aspects to the film. And whoever the casting director was this film, is that on here? Um, I, I just got to say, like I said, uh, what's his name? John Turturro. Wow, what a bad choice. You know, my buddy taught, he said, you know, this would have been great if um, Robert De Niro was still young. And I'm like, yeah, well, the, pff, I mean, yeah, of course. And it would be still, it would be great if James Candelfini was still alive too, yeah. Fucking, I mean, it's honestly the film that the dude was born for, and I mean that for James Gandolfini. Um, put him in this film as Carmine Falcone, and I would have been fucking, I would, it would have it would have been great, but he's dead. So, unfortunately, you're left with apparently John Turturro, because Robert De Niro is too old, and you got 
no one else, no one, no one's in Hollywood. Everyone's away. You got literally John Turturro or nobody. And so you cast him and it's like, oh my fucking God, roll my eyes until they pop out of my skull. That was such a bad fucking choice. And also middle finger to Paul Dano who fucking phoned in the role. And, and thumbs up to Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell, who's an actor that I've seen in a whole bunch of shit. And it's like every time I see this guy, I like him. I'm, I'm going to give him credit. If anyone in this movie deserves credit, I'm giving it to Colin Farrell. Because yet again, he's my favorite character in, it's, in the fucking film. I don't even know it's him until I'm out of the theaters. I'm looking it up on my phone. I'm like, holy shit, that's Colin Farrell? So, yeah, I mean, yeah, did fucking Robert Patterson shit the bed? No, he didn't. He did okay. I like him better than fucking um, Ben Affleck, who sucked. So I'll give him credit. If you want to come back and do it again, Robbie boy, go ahead and come back. You got my approval. You were fine. Uh, fuck Ben Affleck. He was shit. As always, man, leave it to my man, Colin Farrell, to have a knockout fucking performance to where he's my favorite character in the film and I don't even realize it's fucking him. Uh, anyways, I'll just leave it there. Instead of fucking sucking the dick of Colin Farrell, who's not even, like, I like, he's not even a lot of stuff that I like. It's just that, like, every time he randomly pops up, I always love his fucking performance. Every time he just pops up out of nowhere, it's Colin Farrell and something, and I'm like, yo, I love him. I, this is great. Uh, anyways, I'll just leave it there. And, like I already said, not to be redundant, but let me know what you guys thought of this movie. Alright, thanks for listening.